All right, brothers, it's time to back at it. Pull on some more. I'm gonna pull this oil pan, pull these pistons out, really get a good look at the entire block, see what's going on, and see if it is indeed just the rings that are messing up and causing our excessive blow by. And so let's get into it. I'm using a brass punch on the thing. I don't dog up the aluminum. I'm just doing the hammer or anything else. Here it comes out. Come on, baby. You just got these dowels on both sides over here and they're pretty rusty. So. Honestly, nobody. Apparently, <laughs> all of them. Oh, there it goes. Damn, dude, look at these bearings. They look brand new, people. They got some scuff on them, but <laughs> they barely look worn, honestly. Pretty damn good. So, what, uh,. These ones are easy, because sometimes they got the studs on the piston, well at least small block Chevy traditionally has studs on the piston, on the rod, not the cap. So you gotta put those little ears on them or something to cover it up so it doesn't dog up the crank. So with this one, I'll just do what I was doing earlier. There we go. Got the brass punch. And then, uh, Wow, that uh, really fell down there pretty quickly. <laughs> These are oily, so <laughs> the things are just sliding yeah, I might just be able to just push the damn thing out. Let me get a light on the subject. This is where you do a bit of the reach around, if you can see. A little reach around. Yeah, I gotta do a bit of the reach around. Oh my God, I'm just pushing these out. Loose, there's a loose stool. Loose like a goose. Almost there. There it is. There's the punch. There's the piston. There's the piston. That was the problem. There was a punch actually in the motor. The, pu <laughs> the punch was causing the mayhem. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Bearings aren't bad. If you look at the uh, those circles in there. That's metal that actually got loose in the engine. And then, cause these bearings are soft, they're supposed to absorb some metal so that if anything does happen, they can still be used. So those little circles that look irregular, that's metal that got loose and then got uh, dug into the bearing. So, not sure what it's from, but. Here we go. Hmm. So the way these rods are made, these are actually made as one cast, and then they're broken in half. You see how they kind of key together with the way that they're cracked? Especially on this one, it's really obvious. It's really jagged. And it sits together really nicely. Uh, once it's torqued down, it'll actually almost disappear. But if you see, if I put it on backwards, they don't match up at all whatsoever. So when you're reassembling, you really gotta make sure that you have these on correctly. Okay. Otherwise, you're gonna break something. You see how bad they don't they don't fit together whatsoever. Yeah, I'd put it back the right way. So you see this little piece of metal on my finger nail right there? Yep. That's the kind of pieces that we're talking about on the bearing that are getting pitted in there. So you see that piece of metal there? That's where I pulled it off of was the bottom of the ring. And if you look, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit. That line right there, it actually cracked the ring land right there. 
Yeah, you can see it. And well, I'll clean it up. There's another crack right here that I can stick my fingernail in. So this is piston number three, which is actually not even the one. This is actually piston number three, the one that I wasn't even thinking was a problem. But uh, I'm gonna take a closer look. I'm gonna clean them all up and we'll take a closer look at it once we get them all out, so. So I'm over here. I'm over here cleaning up some pistons and I'm like, all right, I know this one's cracked. But then as I'm cleaning it in the wire wheel, I realized this happened. The whole thing's lifting with Good. the, Look at that. Boy. Piston's talking to us over here, boys. Oh. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, I had an excessive amount of knock, and I don't question where it was coming from anymore. Because I think it's pretty obvious what happened. Hot damn. Oh, jeez. That's intense. Well, you guessed it. The crank's next. Got these guys on the outside here, hiding. And then these little guys, they are, uh, 13s on the outers, 15s on the inners. I'm gonna do all the outers just like I was talking about with the head where I'm releasing them uh, staggered from one side to the other so it evenly comes up. It's funny, I release them and you can hear it sounds like when you have like your ear pops and you finally get relief. You hear it's like, it's kind of fun. Just make sure they're all the same length. Well, I mean, I'm gonna tell you if they're the same length. <laughs> Which they are. They're all identical, so it doesn't really matter. Obviously the big ones are. Bearings don't look too bad either. These ones are definitely more scuffed up than the other ones. Okay. Well, they look like they got some fairly deep grooves in them. Might have got some metal down on the bottom end too. I don't ever remember having a bunch of steel coming out of the, the drain though. But hey. It's cool. It's fucking sit up. <laughs> I want to talk about it. So the way that you should pull these out, the bound shafts, you remove this nut here. Oh. Well, I removed the sprocket already from the side and the bolt that holds that retaining plate in and you kind of just, it's like a slide hammer. There you go, and then the plate's off and the whole thing will got a lot more than that. There we go. And there's your intake balance shaft, people. Um, thing's pretty heavy, honestly. I wonder, if I, I wonder if I could just cut this off and put it back in like that to have it, uh, cause it looks like it's just running on inside of here. Instead of having to buy a whole neutral bounce shaft kit, I should be able to just cut this off here and have it just run in there, and chain up that way. But I don't know if the fact that it has to be run in here is gonna mess with it because it might torque because of the chain. I don't know. Uh, if you guys know anything about that as opposed to buying it and being able to just cut it, well, let me know. I'd like to know that. That's how it's going up. Uh -huh. Check it out. We had some snow today out in these streets. I was driving on a little bit earlier. Should've took you guys with me, but I don't have any good way to mount. So I guess I could put the GoPro. Not enough seats. Not enough seats. <laughs> but in the Subaru though, in the Scooby, didn't have enough seats. 
I didn't have a way to attach the camera to the dash to bring you guys with me. But anyway, so that's going to conclude this one. We're going to make this one pretty short just because uh, we got pretty much everything apart. The other stuff's not really exciting. Unless you want to see it, let me know. Although by the time I post this, I'll have gotten more done. But uh, yeah, so that wraps it up. Take it easy, brothers. See you next time.